Hey everybody, in our second video on evaluating fairness and electoral districting, we will be taking a mathematical approach to the topic of compactness. In our first video, we discussed the political background in creating these electoral districts and discussed what things might be considered when drawing these districts so that the result is fair. We said that currently there are five values that figure into drawing district lines. Equal representation, so having roughly the same number of people in each district. Contiguity, which says that our districts must be connected. Something called compactness, which means that our districts shouldn't be too stretched out or have too jagged of a boundary. Electoral competition among political parties and maintaining communities of interest. The focus of this video will be on compactness. So 23 states require that districts are compact and definitions of compactness vary by state, but basically it means that the shapes of electoral districts shouldn't be too stretched out and boundaries shouldn't be too jagged. So compactness attempts to describe the idea that the shapes of the electoral district shouldn't be too stretched out, nor should the boundaries look too jagged. We will use two different measures um, to look at this idea. The first measure is called the Palsby Popper measure, and it determines how contorted the boundary is. The second measure is called the REOC measure, and it determines how stretched out the district is. So first, the Palsby Popper measure. The Palsby Popper measure compares the area of a shape to the perimeter. In our setting, we'll be working with squares. And so our formula for the Palsby Popper measure will be 16 times the area of the shape divided by the perimeter squared. If the Palsby Popper measure is a number close to 1, that means that the boundaries are close to the constant curve, so it's smooth like a circle. And as the measurement decreases, the more contorted the boundaries become. So the closer our number is to 1, the smoother our boundary is like a circle. Here is an example of um, a region and four districts um, have been color coded here. There's an orange district, a green district, a blue district, and a purple district. And our goal is going to be to compute the Palsby Popper measure for a few of these following districts. We're going to assume that each square has a side length of one. And we're going to start by focusing on the orange district. So we're going to need to know the area of this district as well as its perimeter. Since each square has a side length of 1, then the area of each square is also 1. So to compute the area, we just need to count the number of squares. So we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 squares. And so the area of our orange district is 10. Next, we need to compute the perimeter of the orange district. And so for the, for the perimeter, we'll be counting um, the length around the outside of the boundary. And I'm going to use the cursor to try to help us do that. So follow my cursor along and remember that each square has a side length of 1. All right, here we go. Let's count that perimeter out. So we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22. So there were 22 of these lengths one around the exterior of our district. So we would say that the perimeter of the orange district is 22. All right, now we use our formula. So our Palsby Popper measure says we do 16 times our area, which was 10, divided by our perimeter of 22 squared. And using a calculator, we see that the Palsby Popper measure of the orange district is approximately 33. Great. Now let's consider the blue district. 
For the area, again, we'll just count the number of squares. And we see here that we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. 8 squares. So the area of the blue district is 8. For the perimeter, we want to calculate the distance around the exterior. So I'm going to use my cursor again. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. So the perimeter of the blue district is 18. Using our formula, our Palsby Popper measure for the blue district will be 16 times our area of 8 divided by our perimeter of 18 squared. And a calculator will give us that our Palsby Popper measure of the blue district is 0.4. Lastly, let's focus on the purple district. For the purple district, our area, if we count the number of squares, we see that there are 9. And if we compute our perimeter around the exterior of our purple region, we have a perimeter of 12. So the Palsby Popper measure will be 16 times our area of 9 divided by our perimeter of 12 squared, giving us a Palsby Popper measure of 1. Now, this tells us that our orange district with the smallest Palsby Popper measure has the most contorted boundary. And our purple district with a Palsby Popper measure of 1 has the least contorted boundary or is the most circle-like. And if you look at our picture here, that seems to ring true, right? Our orange district, sure enough, does seem to have the most contorted boundary. Our purple district does seem to be the most circle-like. Our second measure is called the REOC measure. And the REOC measure of a shape compares the area of the shape to the smallest circle that the shape can fit in, and so determines how much a shape is spread out from its center. When working with our square lattice, our REOC measure will be the area of the shape, S, divided by D squared, where D is the maximum height or width of S. The farthest we can go along um, up or down or left or right and stay within our shape. Just like the Palsby Popper measure, if the REOC measure is close to 1, there is little dispersion. And while the smaller the REOC measure, the more dispersed the shape exhibits. We're going to go back to our same districts we had before, and this time we're going to compute the REOC measure. Again, we're assuming each square has a side length of 1. Starting with the orange district. For our area, again, we simply are counting squares, and as we saw before, there are 10 orange squares, and so the area of the orange district would be 10. That D is our maximum height or width within our district, and so for the orange district, the maximum height or width is going to come right here with these five squares, so we would say that D is 5. Our formula then tells us that our REOC measure is the area of our shape 10 divided by D squared, so 5 squared, and so our REOC measure of the orange district is 0.4. How about the blue district? In the blue district, if we count squares, we see that we have an area of 8 because there are 8 squares in the blue district, and the the maximum height will be these entire eight squares. This is how stretched out we can possibly be. And so D would also be eight in this example. Our REOC measure then would be eight divided by eight squared or 0.125. Lastly, our purple district. The area of the purple district recall is nine. If we count the number of squares, there are nine. And the most stretched out, the biggest height width or the biggest height would be 3. So D is equal to 3. And our REOC measure is 9 divided by 3 squared or 1. And therefore, we see that the most stretched out district, the number with the smallest REOC measure, is the blue district. 
whereas the least stretched out, the most circle-like again is our purple district. And that does ring true if we look at our picture, right? The blue district is the most stretched out of the three, whereas the purple district is the most condensed. Um, if we were together in class, um, we would now um, do the following activity that I'll just describe for you, um, and then it'll be up to you depending on um, your interests and um, the time you have available, whether or not you want to do this activity or not. Um, but it's about the city of Squareville. So the city of Squareville with the diverse political affiliations and peoples is moving from an at-large elections for city council seats to district elections for city council seats. And the goal of this change is to have the city council members better represent the interests of the citizens of Squareville. And you are going to assume the role of a citizens redistricting committee. Now, each of our six districts must have approximately the same number of people. We're going to allow a 10% margin for error, and so the goal for each district is going to be 23 to 26 people. Each district must be contiguous, meaning connected, so the squares in a district must share a side with another square in the same district. You cannot have isolated squares or squares that only touch at a corner be in the same district. They must be connected by a side. And so here uh, is a picture of Squareville. It's also available in your handout. And so the goal would be to try to break Squareville into six districts that each have 23 to 26 people, and each of these districts must be connected. Once you have your districting done, you can compute the Palsby Popper measure and the REAC measure for each of your districts to see just how stretched out your districts are, just how jagged those boundaries are. And that's all for this second video. Thanks, guys. Bye.